Okay, so we're gonna work through one of the problems from 8.4, I mean, 10, yes, 8.4 quickly here. Okay, so this one's split up into two steps. It tells us an environmentalist wants to find out the fraction of oil tankers that have spills each month. If we're dealing with a fraction or a percentage instead of the mean, then that means we're dealing with proportions. Okay. So step one says, suppose the sample of 262 tankers is drawn. Of these, 202 did not have spills. Using the data, estimate the proportion of oil tankers that had spills. And your answer is a fraction or a decimal number rounded to three decimal places. So a couple of important things. The number it gives us, okay, it tells us our sample size is 262. It tells us that 202 did not have spills. Okay. And then it tells us to estimate the proportion of tankers that had spills. Okay, so read carefully. That is something that they they do occasionally. They give us the opposite of what we need. Okay, so what we're wanting to do, we're wanting to estimate the proportion of oil tankers that had spills. Okay, so to get a sample proportion here, which is what we're using, to get a sample proportion that is p hat, okay, then we've got a little formula that says it's x over n. Okay, so n, I mean x are the events that we're counting. Okay, so they're the ones that we care about. And then, um, I'll go ahead and write that. Out. Events we're counting, the ones we're concerned about. And then n is the total number of events. Okay, so here are the ones that we're counting, the ones we care about are the ones that had spills. So the first thing we have to do on this one is figure out how many tankers had spills. So it says that we had 262 tankers in total. 202 did not have spills, so we're going to subtract those off. And we'll get that 60 had spills. And you don't have to do that subtraction on every problem. You just have to read to see if it gives you the number you want or if it gives you the opposite of the number you want. And this one gave us the opposite. Okay, so 60 had spills. So 60, that's our number that we're counting because we care about what proportion had spills. So up here on P hat, and that's going to be our top number, 60. Out of the total number of tankers, okay, the total number of tankers here is 262. Okay. So you can leave it as a fraction. If you leave it as a fraction, you're going to have to simplify that to 30 over 131, divide top and bottom by 2. Okay. Or it's probably more convenient to write it as a decimal. So we do 60 divided by 262. It's round to three decimal places, so that'll give us 0.229. That is our p hat. Okay. That is our answer on step one. That's our proportion, okay, our sample proportion. Okay. Step two is going to give us the same information, but it's going to tell us to find a different number. Okay. So step two, I'm going to make note that p hat is 0.229. That's from our last step. Okay. The same information, 262 tankers. We had 202 that did not have spills, but this time it says using the data, construct the 85% confidence interval for the population proportion of oil tankers that have spills each month, round to three decimal places. Okay, so we've got the first thing we need. We have our, our point estimate. So before our point estimate would be a sample mean, but here it, our point estimate is a sample proportion. So the other thing we need is a margin of error. All right, we gotta we gotta know what to add and subtract. So our formula for margin of error when we're dealing with proportions, the critical z value times the square root of p hat times one minus p hat over n. 
Okay. So there's our formula. Okay, so this number is going to come from our critical Z value table based on that we want 85% confidence. Okay, so let's go look at that table, the critical values of Z. Alright, so we go to the standard normal table, then at the bottom we have critical values, and this one said, I forgot already, it said we wanted 85% confidence. So for 85% confidence, our critical Z value is 1.44. Okay, Z alpha over 2, 1.44. So here we, here we have 1.44. Okay. And then the rest of these, we've got P hat over here. And then our sample size N is 262. Okay. So plugging into our formula here, we have 1.44 times the square root 0 0.229 times 1 minus 0 0.229. Divided by 262. And remember our margin of error so that we don't get rounding error. We don't want to round too early. So with margin of error, we want to leave five or six decimal places. So if we do the calculation, I'm going to tell you what I'm typing in my calculator. Okay. Um, you can just type it in just like it's written, but I do the part under the square root first. So I'm going to do 0 0.229 times parenthesis 1 minus 0 0.229 close parenthesis divided by 262 and then I'm going to hit equal okay so there just if you want to reference it I get 0.00067388 on and on from there but then I'm going to take the square root of my previous answer there I get 0 0.025959 something okay. but then we need to do times 1.44 so if we do that, end up with 0 0.03738, and then it rounds to 2. So this is my margin of error. Okay. So now we've got one more step, or two more steps if you want to count it that way. We need to take our point estimate and subtract the margin of error. And we need to take our point estimate and add the margin of error. Okay. This is just like what we did um, in the other sections here. So p hat's 0.229. So we need 0.229 minus 0.037382. And it told us we could round our final answer to three decimal places. So 0.229 minus point zero three seven three eight two and when we round I get here point one nine and it rounds up to two so that's the lower endpoint okay. now we do the same thing but we add point two two nine plus our margin of error So there, 0.229 plus big long number, 0 0.037382. And this time we get 0.266 when we round. So this is the upper endpoint. Okay. Those will be our two answers on, on step two. Those are the numbers for our interval. Uh, the only other thing to mention here, really, um, let's look back at at Hawks here. And let me skip to another problem. Sometimes, let's see if I can find one. Okay, no, nope, never mind. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't give you any like that. So um, just make sure and read the problem carefully because sometimes the problem could have just said, instead of saying, um, Instead of saying this part 202 did not have spills, it could have told us 60 had spills, and we could have, we wouldn't have had to have done that subtraction step. We wouldn't have had to do this step. Okay, 
but since it gave us the opposite of what we wanted it said 202 did not have spills we had to subtract to figure out the top number for our proportion and so just read those carefully there well let me know if you have any questions